Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about your home recording studio. Today I'm going to do a review and I'll, I guess an unboxing, another unboxing, right, uh, of the uh, Behringer Ultragain ADA-8200. What this is, is an 8-channel mic preamp that has ADAT connectivity, and that's why I'm interested in it. Uh, I've started recording uh, drums lately, and with all the microphones involved in that, I'm a little short on preamps. So um, for the money, uh, I thought this would be a good thing to give a try to and figured why not go ahead and review it here. Uh, so you get eight mic preamps. Uh, they are Behringer's uh, Midas preamps. And after doing the review of the Euphoria from Behringer that uses the same Midas preamps, I was actually pretty impressed with how those preamps sounded for the money. Uh, I can't say that they're just all inspiring or anything, but man, they were clean, they were quiet, and really in a preamp, uh, especially in a home recording environment, that's about all you really need. As long as your preamp isn't adding too much uh, undesired coloration, and as long as it's not adding too much noise. So this has ADAT connectivity, which means that through a digital connection, uh, you can plug it into your existing audio interface if your interface has ADAT connectivity. And it just serves, uh, this serves as both preamp and converter. So this will be handling all of the uh, preamplification and uh, analog to digital conversion and sending to my, my, uh, my interface. Now it, it, does it does convert to uh, up to 24 bit, uh, bit depth, uh, but it's limited to a 44.1 or 48K um, sample rate. Uh, it, I, I tried to price ones that, that go higher. If you're, if you want like a 96 K or 192 K, uh, ADAT multi-channel preamp, uh, man, you're talking about some pretty serious money there. So I just wasn't ready to, to invest that kind of money. So, uh, this retails for about, uh, 200 bucks. Uh, so eight preamps for 200 bucks. Yeah, what, what do you got to lose here? So uh, let's tear into this thing. Let's see what's in the box and then I'll, uh, I'll get it plugged in and record something through it. All right. So we've got our uh, power cable. <laughs> uh, user guide and uh, what now I'm starting to realize is Behringer's famous sticker. I guess if you want to put it on your bumper. Let everybody know that you have a Behringer at home. Alright. Alright, I wrapped it in plastic here. Same deal as last time and I am not going to be graceful about this. I'll see if I can fast forward this in post because this is kind of painful to watch. All right, so I got it free here. All right, actually that's a pretty sharp looking unit. Uh, brushed metal on the front. Um, uh, I can't tell if that's plastic or, uh, or metal uh, surrounding each channel. Uh, metal chassis, metal here, uh, metal on the back. Uh, actually, I think that's plastic on top, but yeah, yeah, some Good looking, uh, good looking unit. So we've got our uh, eight channels here. We've got uh, each channel has an XLR for a mic level input. We've got a quarter inch for a line input. And so my understanding, these are TRS. Um, let's see, we've got uh, gain control and a signal and a clip indicator, LED indicators for each channel. Uh, over here we have one button that controls phantom power for the whole thing. Uh, so you turn on, it's either all or nothing. Uh, that's okay because most microphones uh, that don't require phantom power are not harmed uh, by having phantom power sent to them. That's not 100% true for all microphones. There are mics in the world, uh, especially older ribbon microphones that could be damaged. Uh, so you might want to uh, just just uh, check and make sure. Um, uh, let's see, what else have we got? Okay, we have a, uh, a couple of LED indicators here for uh, sync and whether it's the master or not. And that, that has to do with the uh, word clock. Um, this is going to be my first connectivity of a word clock as well from one device to another. So we'll see how that goes. 
And then you have an overall unit power push button here. Let's see, on the back, we have got uh, analog line outputs. All of them are XLR. So if you don't want to use ADAT connectivity, you can still go ahead and uh, uh, send these line outputs, just use the preamps on the front and send line outputs to line inputs on your interface if you have such a thing, like if you're using a, uh, like the Tascam US 1800 or uh, uh, US 16X08 that don't have ADAT connectivity, but they do have a bunch of line inputs on them. Uh, this would work well with that as well. Um, let's see, what else we got? We have a switch here for the sink. Tells what this uh, little c connector here does. <laughs> Uh, and this is where you'll plug the word clock uh, uh, coaxial cable in. Uh, so it tells whether it's word clock in, whether it's ADAT in, whether it, you're working, if this is the master, uh, you can tell the other device whether you're working at 48 kilohertz or 44.1 kilohertz. But if it's the slave, then uh, you can. this can either be your word clock in or your ADAT in. Now what I'm gonna do is use the optical ADAT in so that's, this has ADAT in and out both, so you can either have this unit be your master or your slave. Uh, I'm going to have this slaved because the word clock in my RME interface is actually very good uh, from what I understand. I've never used it, but I understand it's pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to use it as the master word clock, uh, connect the uh, word clock here, set this to slave and ADAT in. Uh, I'm going to plug the coaxial in here, or I'm sorry, the uh, optical in here and into the back of my uh, RME interface. Plug the power in. Uh, one other thing, and this is kind of similar to what I found with uh, Behringer's Euphoria the other day, um, they don't provide any of the cable connectivity that you're going to need. Um, they did provide a power cable, so that's good, um, but they did not provide the coaxial uh, word clock cable, and this is a 75 ohm uh, coaxial cable. Uh, I cannot remember off the top of my head what they call this connector. I think it's called BNC. If I'm wrong, uh, correct me down in the comments below. If I find out on my own, I'll write it down there. Um, and then you're also going to need an optical cable, and this uses the TOSLink, TOS link, TOS link, TOS link, I don't know, whatever. Uh, it uses the optical connectors on either end as well. Uh, so you're going to need one of those along with here. All right, I've had, a, uh, I've had a song idea kicking around in my head for the last few days. Uh, I've been wanting to sit and try to kind of flesh the idea out a little bit. So what I figured I would do is I'm going to get this thing all hooked up, uh, get it installed and working, fiddle around with it a little bit, and then... Um, I'm going to see if I can record an entire project using just the preamps from this. You know, uh, all, the, uh, all the mics on my drum kit, I'll send them through this. Uh, I'll record some electric guitar and some bass guitar, uh, bass guitar through uh, an amp, a mic amp, uh, and also a direct signal. And I'll see if I can, well, yeah, I may not be able to send a direct bass through here. It just has line input, so, well, I'll see what I can do. But I, I, I'll try to send everything in this project through the Behringer here uh, so you can get an idea of what different instruments sound like through it, what different microphones sound like through it, uh, and what uh, the kind of cumulative effect of using these preamps exclusively in a project will sound like. All right, well, I guess I'll get started here. Uh, I'll take a few minutes to get this plugged in and working. Um, take a few minutes to uh, kind of get my thoughts sorted on my project, and then I'll I'll set up the camera and uh, just use the finished project as background music for the uh, <laughs> for the process here. Okay, all right, let's get to it.
This is hard.